So when we were to calculate T, this will be equal to. Can you all do it on your calculator and make sure your answer are the same as mine, please? OK, this is important. OK. Minus 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.0, uh, 0.4098. Inverse tangent, I get minus 35, uh, not 30, minus 0 0.3508. And then we have to divide by 4.035. So divide by 4.035. So this is equal to minus 0 0.08696 seconds. Do you all get this? Yes or no? Right? Right, you do get this, right? So when an answer comes to become minus, what does it mean? We are not. Have you all watched the movie Back to the Future? Oh shit, you guys are too young. Have you all watched the movie Back to the Future? Yes, but not a lot of you. Oh man. When I was when I watched Back to the Future, I was 15 years old. Wow. So you guys have not. It's really a good movie. It's about them time traveling. So in reality, in reality, there is no minus one. Minus 0 0.0696. Now, do you all get this answer? Yes or no? Some of you, yes. Now, remember, when you want to get this answer, can you press your calculator to be in the radiance mode? You all know how to set your calculator to the radiance mode? Yes or no? Yes. Please say yes. Don't make me panic now, okay? Because last year during the exam, at least 10 students ask me what is pi. Okay, and lucky there are people walking around. If there are no people walking around, I will have give them a pi. Okay, so you all know why it's reading, yes. Yeah. So is there any problem that does mean to use uh, in, uh, a thing for the power to uh, understand? You you won't be tested using GoSeq because there's no uh, computer when taking the exam. I'm just teaching you to use it. So if you have any other questions in future that you can't solve, you could solve it. There will be no such problem there in the test. In the test, I will not ask you to solve for T. You just write the general equation, okay? Or unique equation, the unique solution. Now. So you realize that time cannot actually be what? Negative. Means if, if physically negative means what? Before I release the system, it is it, it reached steady state, which is not possible. Okay. So when we go into Excel, okay, I plot out the equation. Okay, I plot out the equation. So this is the exact equation that we are using. OK, and I plot the equation out. If I let this equal to zero, right, you can see that the value, right, what, what you can see, this is the plot. It will reach steady state, not at a zero value, right? It's going to be what? Positive. But our calculator did not show us a positive number, OK? Or, or when we saw, we get a what? We get negative value, OK? So now I want you to observe this. Looking at the expression that we have, OK? If now we put this to be equal to minus 1, can you see what is going on? Because of how the equation has been defined, OK, how we solve it, this is the curve, OK? So if I go closer, Minus 0 0.1. Okay. Can you see what's going on? So the value we calculated is this value over here. For this case, we cannot use the calculator to solve for t. Are we clear? Okay, because we get a negative value. Even the absolute answer will be one. 
will be negative. Okay. Again, I want to assure you this is not because of the calculator is wrong. This is not because Excel is wrong. This is because of how the graph is. Are we clear? Okay, so we have to be very, very cautious. I hope all this will, will be more embedded in you when you do numerical methods, which is heavily in dynamics. Okay. Right. Any questions so far? Okay. I cleared some of your doubts or I make it worse. We're okay. Okay. Then another term that I want to specify, which I did not teach, which I have to, okay, is again another set of mathematical expressions. I think you guys know this, but I just want to be sure. So in general, when we have our solution, okay, we have x as a function of time is equal to uh, c1 plus omega nt plus by c2 sine omega and t and sometimes this is approximately equal to c3 sine omega n t plus by pi so you will see so before we go that the answer over here this is a undamped no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, this is an undamped free vibration. Right? For this case. And you'll see sometimes the solution will give you an expression where C3 is approximately equal to C3 sine omega and T. Okay. So my dilemma is where I'm going to say C1. C2, C3 are constant. And pi is the phase angle. Now, I'm not dealing with phase angle down here, okay? But I just want to let you know what is, I mean, pi is the phase angle, okay? So, how is the left hand side of the equation approximately equal to the right hand side? Okay, so now we are going to let T1 is equal to C3 sine pi, and we are going to let C2 is equal to C3 cos pi. Okay. So we're going to substitute where x as a function of time. This is equal to C3 sine pi okay, cos omega and t plus by C3 cos pi sine omega n t okay so from here we can take out c3 sine pi cos omega n t plus by cos pi sine omega n t okay so from here you call this double angle am i right right using the double angle rule this is equal to C3 sine omega nt plus pi. Okay. So I want you to take note, right? So if you see, and when 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 I pose some questions, okay, on, on avenue to learn, the solution is in this expression, okay. And you have this does not mean that it's wrong. Okay, you can you can work the equivalence. But there are other things that I need to inform you also. Like I want you to take note. 
that when you have psi pi is in fact equal to c1 over c3. Okay, so what I did is I, I, I use this expression over here. And we also have cos pi is equal to C2 over C3. So now if we want to determine pi, right? We know that we have to make it sine pi over cosine pi. And this is equal to tangent pi. And this whole thing will be equal to C1 over C3 divided by C2 over C3. So this is equal to C1 over C2. So that's your tangent pi. And finally, so we know how to determine pi over here, right? We know how to determine omega n. Basically, omega n is equal to square root of k over m. And the last one is c3. Okay, we have to determine c3. I, I think I will just become a tree hugger and write c3 over here. Okay. I mean, we are hugging the tree already by not writing on paper. So to determine C3, right? We now let C1 squared plus by C2 squared. Okay, so C1 squared is equal to C3 squared sine squared theta plus by C3 squared squared theta. Okay. So this will be equal to C3 squared. I fact out C3 squared, you get sine squared theta plus by cos squared theta. Uh, sorry, not theta. I beg your pardon, pi. Okay. So from here, we know that C3 squared sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. Okay, so C1 squared plus by C2 squared is equal to C3 squared. Therefore, C3 is equal to square root of C1 squared plus by C2 squared. Okay. So these are some mathematical expression that I want to clarify. I don't want you all to look at the expression later on on certain answers and you start to panic. Okay, I don't want that to happen to you. Any questions so far? Yes. Say it again. It's because we tend to round off the pi. Because we leave pi to three decimal places only, right? So we have some rounding issue over there. That's why it's approximately equal. Because when you graph both of them, they never superimpose one another. And, and this, this, I mean, mathematically, it should be the same, but because of the limitation of truncation error, that's where uh, you have issues like this. Yes. C3 is basically the amplitude. That's it. Okay. Okay, it's just an amplitude. If you look at the expression over here, right? This is an amplitude. Okay. Now coming back to our lecture, we are going to look into performance measure. On Friday, I started briefly on this. Okay. So we are going to do this. So this is known as our performance measure.
for under them free vibration. Okay. So we are going to write out a series of equations and you guys will be like, uh, what is the purpose of this, right? What is the purpose of writing a series of equations like this, okay? So what I've done, yeah, I'll let you guys finish. So as you can see, if we specify that is a under them, so we know that we have a free mass damper system. Okay, and this is our mass, and this is our K, and then C, and then we have X pulling it down. Okay, so this is not a false vibration at all. 